pass our time with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. So yeah, yeah, So you have to um Yeah. 
so be a war so fear and I saw them. I am all for school, I just was a boy in our one in a church. And so this is true. I am in certain for you, my brother. But yes, so I told you. Say, you're a boy, be a young boy born in a way.
Ebi ni mokura no aye mfie bebre. Onyenya emu aye. Amomo baba. Esan sewo rade. And pay it very fracum, a procromo. And I went to Lucia Sampayano. Nanya Upa, a sumbo mayano, a radway yet. It's your radi, my Indian Chigian Somuda. Now, a Sadia would read your wedding. Say a gratta, sir. Say a to my son. Say a ma. Say a warri. Say a day. Radia de Bowen name. Or how be Bonnie be an edgy tea pessy at this uncle name, yet in Indian Bowen name. A radi and his shield was a yeti carca, and he had his Sadia would do a yet to put him back, Macunina, yet a shower, sir. And Cacayeni and my enormous song. That if he see a young war, the woman in answer shower, sir. Or don't for tell one sour or so. I ran in for a prayer. I did not even be born in sorrow. I just pray. Yes, I want to be born in sorrow. And I want to be a person too. I did not even want to be a child. My children are sad. That is true. I am sad. Can they be born? I ran in. What can I do? The young cast the old person off for being so. Now we hear. I am a crabby young man. He is a good man. He is a good man. He is a good man. Kitu wa kuwa. Kwa juu. Udi sewa ya mofra. Tisede sabu wa ofre no no. Arwadu wa juu ofre no so. Una ana madumu sudi na ba Clifton. Nuwa meye ya hano. Ene. Yasina wa mkokuru chumi no. Yini ni pe swingi na si nche. Na fa wa mkokuru ni shani ma. Arwadu fa wa mkokuru ni shani ma. Osori jina. Arwadu. Makumeni na mbere na mwase au wenim na wokrasa maono abetoa kuma pro na so erade asisaya abi ya tibi ya sisi ya mwachao yenu ya swati ya mubi ya bisadi ya esanza ya bisadi yesu tumuti amen.
So today for scripture reading, we will be reading Luke chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of those of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat up into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Amen. So at this time, we're going to invite our brother Jonathan and Grace to come up here and give us the hymn of meditation. Amen. Amen. They came all the way from Clifton, the Hoover Clifton Church, to come worship with us today. Amen. Amen.
you have to try it. <laughs> and so just try it with me too. Uh, so let me see how it goes. Umayenda, Umayenda, Chedia, Kompami, I say, Fiso, Yen, and the door, or die. Oh, 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 that was, that was all right. Let me try another one. Umayenda, or Yen, or Yen, I say. You all better say, Amen, I say. Umayenda, or Yen, or Yen, I say, Fiso, Yen, and the door, or die. All right, Amen, Amen. That's the only two you get from me. <laughs> It's exciting to be here at the Cincinnati and yet SDA Church. The last time I came here was seven years ago, right here in this building. And uh, I'm happy that seven years later, I can come and I can see that the church has grown. Um, I'd like to thank Pastor Yabua and also the youth leadership for asking me to come here today, um, knowing that I have moved to Cincinnati now, and now I'm serving as the associate pastor at the Clifton Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah. I'd like to thank um, each and every participant in the worship service. And I'd like to say a special thanks to Jonathan and Grace for the lovely music that you all sang for us here this afternoon. Amen. At this moment, uh, the time is 12.50. At Clifton Church, we would have finished 20 minutes ago. <laughs> and so, with your permission, just give me until 1.30, no later, no earlier, I'll finish right on the dot. You can take that one to the bank. <laughs> With that being said, I have a message today that is going to change your life. Oh, okay, you all are not feeling me here, so let me try it here. I have a message today that is going to change your life. Yeah. Right, you see, me. Let me try it again with this side. I have a message today that is going to change your life. Yeah. My message today is called Agents of Change. Agents of change. And I believe that if you rightly receive this message, you will leave here this afternoon empowered to be an agent of change. I'll begin my sermon by asking you all a question. And the question is not rhetorical. In other words, you can give me your answer. The question is this. If there was one thing in the world that you could change, what would it be? That's my question. Talk to me. Oh, you're trying to quiet now. Talk to me, ladies. Talk to me. You hear your team? You hear your team? <laughs> well, let me tell you, young girl. There's some things in life that you're not in control of. And so with your mom, praise God that you have them. And second, with your hair. Your hair is black, it's African, and it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on, y'all. What is one thing in the world that you could change? Talk to me. Huh? That excellent. What is one thing in the world that you change? Thank you. I saw you. Talk to me. Opportunities for minorities. Wow. If there's one thing in the world you can change, what would it be? Let me get another answer. Yes, talk to me. Racism. You would change you would change racism, definitely. If there's one thing in the world that you could change, what would it be? Talk to me, sir. Worldly pleasure. pleasure. Excellent. I saw someone here. Yes, I do. You would take sin from earth. I think I saw someone on this side. Okay, someone said the president of the United States. Those who are watching us online, that's not what I said. That's the record online view. All right. Follow-up question, follow-up question, follow-up question is this. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. This question gets hot every time I present that at the church. question is this. If there was one thing in the church that you could change, what would it be? What would it be? Now, now I know everyone got a little scared. Okay. You, lateness, my lord, my lord. You need to get here on time for Sabbath school, especially with your kids. Next one. What is one thing in the church that, in the cha in the church that you would change? What would it be? I know what it is. Everyone is scared of the church. Backbiting. That's why. Backbiting. Huh? Backbiting. Backbiting. Yes, yes, yes. We'll change backbiting in the church. Is there, is there anything else? Yes, talk to me, young girl. You change, you change our preaching. Our preaching needs to be more relevant and engaging. What? Yes, talk to me. You change how dirty the walls are. So you walls are all right. I'm not going to the church where the walls are really bad. But yes. 
It's important for God's house to look amazing. If there's one thing in the church well, if that you can change, what would it change? For me, there are several realities that I would love to change in the world, and there are several realities that I would love to change in the church. One of the realities I would love to change in the church is what we call the massive youth and young adult exodus that has taken place within our church. According to statistics from a group called Varna Research Group, they say that every six out of ten young people, that is 59% of young people who grow up in Christian churches end up walking away either from their faith or from their institutional church at some point in the first decade of their adult life. The youth and young adults are leaving the church. That is something that I would change. In addition to that, there's so many other things that we would all like to change. And so because of that, this afternoon, my sermon is called Agents of Change. And what I intend on doing this afternoon is that I intend on taking us on a journey with one of the greatest agents of change in the entire Bible. His name is called John the Baptist. And in Luke chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, we find a comprehensive account of his change ministry. And for the remainder of our time this afternoon, what we will do is that we will look at five characteristics. How many characteristics, everyone? Five. No, that was someone. I need everyone. How many characteristics, everyone? Five. We will look at five characteristics of an agent of change. Cincinnati, Gangan, SDA Church, are you ready for these five characteristics? Yes. No, no, no. Is, are you all ready for these five characteristics? Yes. If you are, let's bow our heads and let us pray. Father, as we begin with this morning, this afternoon's message. My prayer is that you speak to our hearts, inspire us to be agents of change. This is our prayer. Hide me behind the cross and let Jesus shine forth powerfully in each and every person's heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Luke chapter 3. If you're there, pick your Bibles up. We are in verse 1. We're in Luke chapter 3 and we're in verse 1. This is what the Bible says. You're going to encounter a lot of names. Don't be afraid of the names. This is what the Bible says. The scripture says that it was in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Scripture says Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, and Herod was the mayor of Galilee. Verse 1 continues by saying that Herod's brother Philip was the mayor of the region of Iturea and Traconitis, and Lysanias was the mayor of Apollonia. And then Luke chapter 3, verse 2 says this. It says it was during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Church, I don't know if you saw it, but if you didn't, let me make it clear. The historical picture that Luke is painting is powerful. Here is why. You see, at the outset of Luke chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, what Luke does, stick with me carefully, church, because I'm going somewhere. What Luke does is that Luke identifies some names. He mentions Tiberius, who was the emperor at the time. He mentions Pontius Pilate, who was a governor at the time. He mentions Herod, Antipas, Philip, and Lysanias, all who were, watch this now, mayors at the time. Church, follow me, I'm going somewhere. And in identifying these five individuals, what Luke was doing is that Luke was identifying, watch me carefully, church, the political leaders at John's time. Follow me. Then in verse 2, what Luke says is that it was during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. In mentioning Annas and Caiaphas, what Luke was doing is that Luke was identifying, watch me carefully, the religious leaders in John's time. Follow me now. So what Luke has done is that Luke has identified the political leaders. And then Luke has identified the religious leaders. But then at the end of verse 2, the scripture says, but the word of God came to John the Baptist, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Oh, church, you church. Amen. 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 You're not seeing it. You're not seeing it. Let me help you. Let me help you. You see, when the Spirit of God 
was looking for an agent of change. The Spirit of God saw the political leaders of the day, those who were in a position to effect change, and the Spirit of God rejected them. Then the Spirit of God saw the religious leaders of the day, those who were doubly expected to effect change, and the Spirit of God rejected them. And the Spirit of God chose an unknown and uncredentialed man in the wilderness to be his agent of change. Oh my goodness, this man John, he was an uncredentialed man. He had no degree from the local theological seminary. Neither was he ordained in a local synagogue, but God chose him to be the agent of change. Amen. This man, John, you was an unknown man. You could not find his profile on Facebook. Neither could you catch his pictures on Snapchat. And you could not find his chain messages on WhatsApp. He was an unknown man. But despite his obscurity, God chose him above the political leaders and above the religious leaders to be his agent of change. Yeah. And if this is God's choice, Cincinnati, Ghana, hear me carefully. If this is God's choice, then it reveals to you and I the first characteristic of an agent of change. And boy, it's good. The first characteristic of an agent of change is this. You do not need a political position or religious position to be an agent of change in this world. Amen. Oh, but I know the problem, Pastor. I know the problem. I know the problem. You see, Pastor, some of the church members are waiting on you to give them a position. That's why they haven't chosen to be an agent of change. Or some of them are waiting for the church board to give them a position. That's why they have not chosen to be an agent of change. Or some people are waiting for the nominating committee to give them a position. That's why they have not chosen to be an agent of change. But today, how many of you know that you don't need a title to be attached to your name before you can stand up, wake up, go into the world, and be an agent of change? Amen. If there's someone here who wants to be an agent of change this morning, let me see by a show of hands. Let me see by a show of hands. I also want to be an agent of change. But then, but then, this is not all. This is not all. The scripture says the son, that the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. But the story, but the story, Cincinnati again, it doesn't stop there. The story says in verse 2 that not only did John receive the word in the wilderness, but the scripture says in verse 2 that he went into all the region around the Jordan. Oh, church, 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 don't miss it, don't miss it, don't miss it. You see, there is a significance behind the symbology of the location. Follow the picture now. You see, the scripture says that John received the word in the wilderness. But the scripture says in verse 3 that John went into the region of the Jordan. What is the significance of the two locations? Permit me to explain. You see, the wilderness was a place of privacy. But around the Jordan was a place of publicity. You see, the wilderness was a place of isolation. Uh, but around the Jordan was a place of involvement. You see, the wilderness was a place of seclusion. But around the Jordan was a place of community. Oh, church, this is good. Watch what happens. You see, John receives the word in private but John does not keep the word in private. He takes it out into the public. Amen. John receives the word in isolation. But he doesn't keep the word in isolation. He gets involved. Amen. John receives the word in seclusion. But John does not keep the word in seclusion. He goes out into the community. Amen. And church, can I preach this afternoon? Yes. We also receive the word in the privacy of our home. But the word is not supposed to stay in the privacy of your home. Amen. It needs to get involved in the public of Cincinnati. Amen. You receive the word in the isolation of this church building. But the word, but the word is not supposed to remain in the isolation of this church building. Amen. We need to go out and get involved. Yes. We receive the word in the seclusion of our 
our denomination, but church, do I have a witness today? We do not need to keep the word in the seclusion of our denomination. We need to get involved in the community of other faith and religion. John receives the word in the wilderness, but he goes out into the Jordan. My question to you this morning is, have you gone out into the Jordan? If this is the case, if this is the case, then it reveals the second, the second characteristic of an agent of change. Church, don't miss it. Mark it down. The second definition, or the second characteristic of an agent of change is that an agent of change must interact with the world. Amen. All right, I know you all are not feeling me yet. So let me give you an illustration to explain my point. Church, do you all know the difference? between a thermostat and a thermometer. I think some, some people are working on the thermostat right now. <laughs> it's a little hot in here. Let me explain the difference. Now, I'm talking about their primary functions. You see, church, don't miss it now. <laughs> this is good. This is good. If your neighbor is sleeping, tell them that they're missing something good. <laughs> That's all right. Nobody's sleeping. <laughs> now, don't miss it. I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried that you're going to miss it. I'm worried that the person on your left is going to miss it. That's what I'm worried about. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. You see, what a thermometer does is that a thermometer reads the temperature that is in a room, and then on its device, it reflects the temperature. Are you following? But by way of contrast, what a thermostat does is that a thermostat sets and regulates the temperature that is in the room. Amen. And this is the point I want to make today. The point I want to make today is this. When an agent of change interacts with the world, the agent of change does not interact with the world like a thermometer simply to read and reflect the culture. An agent of change interacts with the world as a thermostat to set and to regulate the culture. Yeah. And again, then my question to you this morning is are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer? When you go into the schools, are you a thermometer merely reading and reflecting the culture around you, or are you a thermostat setting and regulating the culture around you? When you go to your job, are you a thermometer reading and reflecting the people who are around you, or are you a thermostat setting and regulating the people who are around you? Amen. When you are in your neighborhood, are you a thermometer reading and reflecting the values of your neighborhood, or are you a thermostat setting and regulating the values of your neighborhood. An agent of change must interact with the world, but we don't interact with the world as thermometers. We interact with the world as a thermostat. Do I have amen. a thermostat in here today? If I have a thermostat, let me hear you say amen. amen. Oh, but I wish the text could stop there, but the text does not stop there. It continues. The text says, in Luke chapter 3, verse 3, that not only did John go into the region around the Jordan, but the text says in verse 3 that as he went into the region around the Jordan, he did something very, watch my language now, specific. What did the preacher do? Well, the text says in verse 3 that he went around proclaiming a baptism of repentance for a forgiveness of sins. Church, you slept on it. Amen. Amen. But notice, the third characteristic of an agent of change is right in front of your eyes. The third characteristic of an agent of change is this. An agent of change must preach to the world. Yeah. Alright, I know why the amens were not strong. They were not strong because sometimes we have a limited conception of what it means to preach. You see, some of you think that what it means to preach is that you have to prepare PowerPoint slides, have sermon notes, stand behind a glass pulpit, speak in front of a congregation, and that is preaching. Watch me now. That is one way to preach. That is not the only way to preach. Oh, my church. Amen. That is one way to preach. That is not the only way to preach. You see, you see, you see, you see. If I pick up my phone, where's my phone? You see, if I pick up my phone and I call someone who is discouraged to encourage the discouraged, that is a form of what everyone, please, okay, somebody. Now, if I 
go and do a one-on-one -on -one Bible study with someone. That's a form of whatever. Okay, okay now if I if I if I have a spiritual conversation with a friend of mine at the park or with a friend of mine at work, that is a form of what everyone? Come on, church, that's a form of what everyone. You see, there are multiple ways to preach, not just one way to preach. So long as you are telling someone about what God has done for you and his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, I mean preachers in the house this morning. Yeah. You see, the only preacher in this church is not just pastors or the elders. Each and every one of you can be a preacher if you choose to be an agent. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm preaching this morning, but you see, the time is against me, so let me move forward. You see, this raises a question. Church, this raises a question. Church, are you following my question? Yes. You sure? Yes. You sleeping on my question? No. Oh, no, you're not sleeping on my question? No. I was just checking, because you're not allowed to sleep when I preach. You, know that. <laughs> you see, you see, you see, this raises a question from the text. Because if an agent of change must preach to the world, the question is this. What exactly should the agent of change preach? Huh? That's my question. Because all preaching is not equal. If an agent of change must preach to the world, then what's your message? I'm glad you asked me that question. The text has an answer for you. Notice what the text says in verse 3. I'm only in the text today. Notice what the text says in verse 3. text says in verse 3 that John went around proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Church, our message is twofold. We must preach repentance, but we must also preach for him. Amen. Watch my language now. The two must always go together. Amen. Amen. Jonathan, help me out because you know I think the people are struggling to grasp this concept. So, Jonathan, help me out. You see, in life, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, I believe that there's some things in life that must always go together. You may not agree. But you're not the professional here. This is my professional here. <laughs> the first thing, now this is now this is this is me when it comes to my food. The first thing that, that must always go together, hold it up high. Peanut butter. Don't do anything else. If I come to your house, don't just put peanut butter on my bread. It don't make sense to me. Don't just put jelly on my bread. It don't make sense to me. It gotta be peanut butter and what, everyone? Yes. The two must always go to what, everyone? Yes. Put the next one down. Come on, Jonathan. Show them, show them. Because today they gotta get what I'm trying to say. This is just me. This is my professional opinion. I don't care what you think. I'm the professional. Oh, 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 oh. Get ahead of myself. Pancakes? The two must always go together. Don't try to separate them. My father tried to separate them one day. <laughs> we almost fired him as the father of the household. <laughs> he tried to put pancakes and honey. That day we nearly staged a military coup. I said, Dad, there's no way you can put pancakes and honey. That is the definition of an abomination. <laughs> it must always be pancakes and what everyone said. Don't get the order twisted, messed up, or mixed up. The two always go with everyone. Yeah. Come on, Jonathan, I think they're getting it now. One more. Now, I'm a dead end man. However American I sound, when you slice and dice me, I'm getting into the court. This is just me, in my professional opinion. White rice must always go with some type of stew. Conton yeah. rice? Tomato? Auntie, what else? Help me. What other stew? Egg stew? Why, why? There's fish stew? Vegetarian. God bless you. No. White rice was always going to stew. No, 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 no. Now, I thought, I thought that this was a given in life. Not until I went to North Carolina one time with my African American friend, Black American. I'll continue. <laughs> so, I remember, man, we sat there and we were at a Indian house. 
So I'm there, and our Danielle cook makes some white rice, and she brings the white rice to the table. Now me, we're just too much meat. Like a good Ghanaian, I looked at the white rice and I said, I'm waiting for the white one to stew for right now. I turn my head and all of a sudden, I see my friend putting some of the white rice on his plate. I said, maybe he's just a little hungry, so he's waiting for the stew. I look back at him, all of a sudden, he's eating the stew and the white rice. And I look at him, and I'm like, my friend, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, no, no, Coach, this is slamming. This is good. I said, white rice by itself. He said, no, 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 Coach, this is amazing. Let me tell you all something. I don't speak tree, but that day tree came out my mouth. <laughs> I said, my friend, share your answer. That's why I said, I said, share your answer. White rice. But then you don't want to be eating with sugar or butter. I said, hey, dear man, share your answer. White rice must always go with what everyone's going to do. Come on, say it to somebody. Junior, I got Junior. So we're going to use these two as examples. Kofi 
patience you have to make up my brother from my dearly loved. What we're going to do at this moment is that you are going to be our king. Everyone, all hail King Kosi. All hail. All hail. Now, King Kosi is an ambitious king. He likes to conquer and seize new and more territory. This time, he has his eyes set on bigger and better things. He wants to go to a new place in order to annex that territory. What place are you going to go? Las Vegas, that's where he's going to annex. <laughs> and so, King Kofi is going to go to Las Vegas in order to make that a part of his kingdom. But before he goes to Las Vegas, King Kofi has to make sure that the role is befitting of a king of his magnitude, power, splendor, and majesty to travel on. Amen. Because of this, the king has to hire someone. He hires a person whom the ancients call the forerunner. And so, Junior, you're going to become our forerunner. Junior, come right here. And Junior, as our forerunner, watch me carefully, church, because he represents all of us. Junior, as our forerunner, this is what Junior is going to have to do. Junior is going to have to check the road to make sure that the road is befitting for the king to travel. So watch me carefully now, church. Watch me. Junior, are you ready? This is a big mission. If you get it wrong, the king will kill you and your family. Don't get it wrong. Are you ready? No smiling. <laughs> we start the journey. You see, Forerunner Junior goes, and as he goes, he realizes that hmm, the road has some deep ravines and some low valleys. He looked at it and said, No, 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 no. King won't travel on this. He turns back, goes to the king, and gets some equipment so that he can fill up these low valleys. Hence, hence, hence. The text can say, every valley shall be filled. Forerunner Junior is still on his excursion. And as he's traveling, he recognizes that uh, this road has a lot of high mountains and jagged hills. King doesn't want to walk or travel on those high mountains and jagged hills. So he turns back to the king, go back to the king. He gets some equipment so that he can start to smooth and sand down some of these high mountains and jagged hills. Hence, 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 the text can say, and every mountain and hill shall be made what everyone knows. All right, all right, all right, all right. Forerunner Junior is still, is still, he's still hard at work. Are you tired yet? You better say no. So, he's working, he's working. Notice that as he's working, he's walking on the road, and whoa, he, 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 oh, he realizes that the rope is a little crooked. So he runs back to the king. Come on, you got some equipment. Get some equipment. And he goes back and he starts to straighten some of these ropes. Hence, 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 the text can say, and the crooked places shall be made straight. We're almost done. Come here, come here. Now he's walking on the rope. He realizes that the road is, oh, great. It's even rougher than the roads in Ghana. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something about Ghana. You know, I go there every year. You know, I can walk on those roads. My shoes get busted, dirty, dusty. I look at the people that they can walk on those roads. Smooth, nothing happened to their shoes. <laughs> I realize there's a different type of walking on them. <laughs> that's a that's a different life. <laughs> So he realizes the roads are rough. Now you know the king has Gucci and Louis Vuitton and Prada shoes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He can't walk on that road. So he gets some equipment and he smooths down the road. Hence the text will say, and the rough places shall be made what everyone wants. Oh, no. All right, we're concluding. Now, 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 church, the valleys have been filled. The high mountains have been made low. The crooked places have been made straight. The rough places have been made smooth. And the forerunner exits the way. And now the king can travel on the road. And as he travels on the road, all flesh shall see the salvation of our king. All flesh shall see the salvation of our God. Put your hands against our You see, folks, this is why 
why we preach. I got seven minutes. Stick with me. This is why we preach. We preach in order to prepare hearts for the Lord. You see, auntie, there are some people who have sunken low in the valleys of depression. Brother, we preach so that we can lift them up from the fatigue of despair to the buoyancy of hope. Sister, there are some people whose hearts have been made high on the mountains of hubris and pride. We preach so that they can be made low with the humility of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some people who are walking on the crooked places of life. We preach so that they can begin to walk in what the psalmist calls the path of righteousness. And in church, there are some people whose hearts have been made hard by destructive habits, secret sins, and terrible attitudes. We preach so that God can transform these hearts of stone into a heart of flesh. And when we do this, Amen. we will prepare this world for the coming of our God, our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. But then there's, but then if we don't do this, the only thing that will be left is a fearful expectation of the judgment. Characteristic number four, I'm sealing this thing home. An agent of change will get some results in the world. Amen. Follow the text carefully. I'm in Luke 3, verses 10 through 14. Notice something carefully, church. Look at your Bible. I got six minutes. Follow me carefully. The text says in verse 10 that three groups of people came to John. The first group of people were the crowd. The second group of people, according to verse 12, were the tax collectors. And the third group of people, according to verse 14, were the soldiers. If you look at the passages carefully, all three groups came and they asked them one question. They said, what then shall we do? What then shall we do? What then shall we do? In other words, John's preaching was so powerful that it got some results. It got some fruit for his labor. I'm here to encourage you today that if you choose to be an agent of change, you will get some results. This is, this is an experience I had back in high school. This is my graduate. There's a friend of mine over here. His name is called Blake. And Blake labeled himself as an atheist. You know what an atheist is? Someone who does not believe in God, an atheist. And we used to have conversations about religion all the time. I would share about God, and he would share why he does not believe in God. It seemed as if our conversations were going nowhere until we both graduated. One day, one day, one day, I'm at the great and illustrious college, Oakland University. And while I am there, I get a message on Facebook. Thank God for Facebook. And all of a sudden, the message is from this guy called Blake. Watch what Blake says. Blake writes me and says, hey, Kojo, I hope all is well. The reason why I'm messaging you is because I realize that here in my dormitory, there is a church that is in the basement of my dormitory. He said, Kojo, the reason why I am missing you is because every now and then, I find myself going to this church. Yeah. And he said, Koja, no, 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 no. he said, Koja, the reason why I go to this church is in part because of the conversation that we used to have back here. Yeah. Yeah. You see, church, don't make me preach. You see, I'm trying to tell you that if you choose to be an agent of change, you will get some results. People will sign up for Bible studies. People will come to this church building when you invite them. People will get baptized when the preacher gets, makes the appeal. But even if, even if you get no results in this world, never forget that the harvest does not come at the end of the church service. The harvest will come at the end of the age. Yeah. Get to heaven, when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven and you bow before the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, crowns upon crowns, Stars upon stars will be placed on your head because of all the people that you reach. Because on this day, you chose to be an agent of change. Amen. I got three minutes. I told you, I finished one third of the job. No more, no less. There's a fifth characteristic of an agent of change. And the fifth characteristic is this. Last but not certainly least, an agent of change uplifts Jesus to the world. Amen. You see the text, and I'm concluding now. Oh, there's a little mistake. I'm sorry about that. It's supposed to be Luke 3, 16 and 17. That was our scripture. 
Notice, I landed right back at our scripture. The text says in Luke 3, 16 and 17, that there were some rumors in the church. Anyone know about rumors in the church? Yeah. My Lord, tell the truth and shame the devil. There were some rumors in the church. Why? I don't know if it started from the choir. I'm not sure. But there were some rumors in the church. Maybe it started with the youth. You know, the youth always has a way of catching all the rumors. They just don't let you all know that they know. The rumor was spreading. Do you know what the rumor was? The rumor was that John the Baptist was the Messiah. Like every good preacher, pastor, the church member thinks we don't know, but we always know all the rumors. John the Baptist got wind of the rumor. So one day he stood on the pulpit to clarify the rumor. And in verse 16, we find his clarification. He says, I baptize you with water. Well, and God, God never said, what's that? <laughs> but someone is coming who is greater, greater than I am. He is so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie his sandal strap. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire as well. He will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn the chaff with never-ending fire. I fit on this. Ultimately, an agent of change uplifts Jesus to the world. Because when it's all said and done, just like you see on that picture, Jesus is the ultimate agent of change. And so Cincinnati, Canadian, as I sit down, I say to you this afternoon, uplift him. Amen. Uplift him because he's effected change through his miraculous birth. Uplift him. Amen. Uplift him because he effected change through his impeccable ministry. Uplift him. Amen. Uplift him because he effected change through his radical teachings. Uplift him. Amen. Uplift him because he effected change through his substitutionary and atoning death. Uplift him. Amen. Uplift him because he rose up from the grave through a glorious and historical resurrection. Uplift him. Uplift him because right now he is in the heavenly sanctuary interceding for you and interceding for me. Uplift him. Uplift him. Because one day he is going to burst through those clouds and come and take us all to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uplift him. May God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Wami yomu sejia wachi yengi yaba ubono. Wami yengi na ye agents. Ya ye ambassadors. Ayi jina wanemu. Seni yame fire so. Na wachi yafu fro. Adi afamu omu. Ama uwe uwe kaba reno. Aswa ba mfaswa. Sansa usi siya mausua. Oba kishia kre gina adi yaba wanchai. I read the achievements you bet me a year. Yes, our spirit in the kayo. It's a brave moment, Uncle Chris Sane. Rabbit Naku be a remo. And be a year more influent to my mutta. Say fear your walk, say your more, say your jumemo, say your again, a radius throw. My young Kaiser, ye agents. My young Kaiser, yes, yes, your pine at your amount. And can can you send car a day a new? A radius throw, sir. My young chassier every day. My young chassier every day. The new one that's here. My young cassier subai and now a dinch, sir. You knew. Now for fresh air, Nani air canoe. Oh, my jelly, sir. A son sent me wound. Yes, so mono. Minimi, sir. Yes, so everything I am, sir. Rather play a day again. What quite your watch will be a shananemu. I ready my ministry, ain't me and Cosso. Now, but tell me how my way, you know, I ready a mouse so. Now, about the key, you know, and Sanda. We need a pipe or we need a visa, dear, or we can be a jar. Yamioba, Yamel, Amen.